So get you some Navy coffee uh, over there before you go home today. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John we'll look at this morning briefly. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 14. John 1 14 is what we're going to look at today and give place to today in our understanding. Just a Just a few minutes in the word of God, just to finish off a series we've been doing, and that's Christmas glory, Christmas glory, Christmas focus, and the Christmas glory focus is is Jesus, and we always want to maintain that. So we come from John chapter 1, verse 14, where John is giving his commentary before he begins sharing the, the story of Jesus. It says in verse 14, and the word, he calls Jesus the word, the logos, the message. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then look at that next line. And we beheld his glory. And now he describes the glory. It's the glory as the only begotten of the father. And what that glory brought with it, what Jesus brought with it in his glory, two things, full of grace and and truth. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for Christmas and everything that Christmas means in your glory. So today, show us Christmas glory. Show us how to behold the glory, not just on Christmas, but every day of our lives. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. We looked at a few weeks ago as we started this series just for the month of December. We first, we looked at glory in the highest, glory to God in the highest. Those words came from angels. Angels sung those words. They expressed those words to those shepherd boys and those shepherd girls that were out there in that field. And they, they, the angels let them know and let us know that God's glory has to be always at the highest point, at priority high point. After that, we looked at all glory to God. The glory Christmas is giving all glory to God. And we looked at that in the fact is realizing that the glory of Christmas, Christmas glory, is everything. And it's everything Jesus. It's everything him. We don't have to explain that too much. We know that. We know that. But so easily we talked about, so easily Jesus is eclipsed by Christmas tradition. And that's all subject to our own examination and our own conscience. I I just don't want to let Amazon have more importance than Jesus. And I tell you, man, you're trusting those Amazon people to get there. They tell you they're coming, but they never come. (laughs) <laughs> they never come, and they, you, they got you where they want you, don't they, in the clutches of their hands. But we, So we talked about giving all glory to God, all glory to God. Last week, we looked at glory shine, glory shine, and back to those shepherd people again. The, the glory of the Lord, it says, shone around them. And and we talked about last week about the importance of us allowing God to give us glimpses of glory. That you and I are are to have that fortunate and blessed experience. And Paul said this experience we can have from glory to glory to glory to glory. It is something that happens regularly as as God's will. And we want to have those experiences. We want to see Jesus in all focus, him glorified, him honored. Today we look at beholding the glory, beholding the glory, and that's right here in the verse that we looked at. We'll come back to it here in a minute. Glory, just to recap, just to review, glory means means the weight or the impression or really the central focus of God. We talked about this when we began these series of messages. I use that photographer's terminology point of focus everything doesn't have to be focused in a, in a picture of a photographer but there are points of focus where something has to be the point of focus and Jesus is to be the point of focus that's what glory initially means it means him getting the focus 
in, in every situation, every part of our lives, not just only on Christmas, but we see a lot of talking about his glory during Christmas from angels. But you and I need to see him glorified, not just in the good times, but also in the trying times too. I, I need to keep Christ, and you need to keep Christ, the point of focus. Because it is so easy, it is so easy to blur him out. And he blurs in, and he just comes in with everything else, and everything is just a, a blur. He doesn't stand out. He doesn't have that point of focus out. That's what we've been encouraging ourselves to let God do in our lives. And it's something that he does. He does it by his grace. He does it by his action. He does it because he wants to, is to help you and I look to him. Look to him. So today, we briefly talk about beholding the glory. There's a prayer for glory. And we looked at this in the last couple of weeks. It's on the screen. Psalm 15, excuse me, Psalm 57, 5. Psalm 57, 5 says this, and it's a prayer. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. That, that's the highest. Highest is above the heavens. High place. And then here's the prayer. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory stand above, be above, placed above. Everything else on earth in our lives. And that's a good prayer to pray right there. A good prayer to ask God to do. Because you and I can't do it. We, it. We're incapable of the ability to be able to place God in his right place of highest glory. It's a work of the Lord. And he'll do that work in our lives if we ask him to do it. Let's talk about beholding the glory. John 1.14. Beholding the glory here. We just briefly just look at this verse and see what we can grab from it. First of all, first line, we see that the word became flesh. Word became flesh. The word there means divine expression. Or I said it earlier, it means message. Jesus is called the, here the word, the message, the divine expression. Divine meaning from God. Jesus speaks for the Godhead, Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus speaks for that. He's always the smoke, spokesman. Who was Moses talking to at the burning bush? He was talking to Jesus. Who did Abraham was talking to when, the, when they came, those three men came to him? He was talking to Jesus. Jesus is always through the Bible, the spokesman. When Paul was blasted on the way to Damascus, the apostle Paul, Jesus said, I am Jesus. Whom you persecute. He's always the word. He's always the spokesman. He's always the one that comes with the voice from the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's on the screen. It's Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. We saw this earlier. Hebrews 1, verse 2. Has in these last days, God in these last days, spoken to us, there it is, by his Son. By his son. In these last days, the days that we're living in now, Jesus speaks. He speaks. Jesus is the message to the world. So we see here that the word, John 1.14, became flesh, became incarnate. He became incarnate. He became, God became man. God became man. Don't worry about that little baby. He ain't bothering me. And I'm the one we worry about. Don't worry about them. <laughs> and he's not bothering me, so don't you worry about it. This, this is Christmas. <laughs> Thanks. The, the word became flesh. The word, the word is the one that became from God. He became man. No less God when he was man. See, that's the thing that just blows our mind, the incarnation. It just blows us away. He's fully man. He's fully God. And that's what Christmas is all about. You and I can't reach to God, so he reached down to us, and he became with us. Next thing John says, not only he became flesh, but he dwelt among us. The point is, he came and he, and he, and he, he hung around. He hung around. Jesus was, was God, and he's visiting people. He's hanging around. He's eating at people's houses. 
He's holding children. And he's having this touch, which Jesus gives that clear picture of Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. He's dwelling, and he dwells with you and I, too. Be encouraged for that. Not only around just Christmas time, but be encouraged in that every area and every time of your life. That God dwells with you. He's with you. He's, he's in where you're at, wherever you're at in life. Now, the point of the next phrase he mentions here in verse 14, we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. The word, the word beheld there means we gazed at it. It means we just didn't look at it and look away. It, it, it was something that we locked on to. We locked on to his glory. When, when God... I'll just say it for me. I'm assuming it's universal, too. I don't know how when you deal with it. When God expresses his glory in very unique and beautiful ways, and, and, and you sense the presence of God, and you don't see his glory with your natural eyes, but you see it with your soul, it's easy to just lock on and just say, oh, my gosh. Praise God for his glory. John says here, when Jesus was with us, we, we beheld, we beheld his glory. We beheld his position of focus. Nothing else got in the way. Nothing else would eclipse Jesus. We looked at him. And that is something that he always has when he comes into the place purely. When Jesus comes on the scene, he gets the attention. Nothing else does and nothing else will. When he's fully, fully there. And in your life and mine, we just want him fully there. We want to gaze upon him. And that grace helps us gaze. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews 12, verse 2 is on the screen here. Looking unto Jesus. That's the point. Looking unto Jesus. Gazing upon Jesus. The author, beginning, and the finisher of our, of our faith. He, he's the bookends of our lives, our Christian life and walk with Jesus. He's, he's the author. He's the originator. He's the writer. He's the beginning. And he's also the finisher. And you and I should find in between author and finisher of Jesus, we should find contentment and comfort there too. Finding contentment and comfort in that. I pray you do. And it's all in his love you and I find that. His unconditional love. He loves you unconditionally. And to find that love, to embrace that love, to experience that love, we need to look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. You, you, you and I know when we're doing that and when we're not. I know that something in my life, something happens in my life, something's dropped, something's dashed, something that ends up not favorable like I want it to be. I can choose, with God's help, he'll help me and he'll help you. We can choose to look unto Jesus in that, knowing that he's the first and the last, the author and the finisher of our faith. Having that kind of relationship and having that kind of maturity fix upon Jesus is going to be beneficial for your life and mine, especially in this world. Especially in this world when, when this world doesn't get it right. Most of the time, this world, this system, this, this man-humanistic system, the world, that's why you and I are out of here in Jesus. And, 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 and the real people, the mature people say amen to that, don't they? Because you, you, you don't have to be 65 years old like me. You, you can just be around here 16 years and come to the conclusion that this world got issues. And it's not just some finger, finger pointing at some people, pointing fingers at the president or at the police or something like that. No, it's, it's realizing the whole system of that has to have something better. And we do have something better. His name is Jesus Christ. And he comes in the life, in our lives, and makes sense of life, but also gives hope for life 
because we want to trust in him. We want to look to him. I don't want to look to. I don't want to look to this system. But I so easily do that. I so easily look to the world for answers when the world doesn't even have it. It just shrubs its shoulders. I didn't know. The world doesn't know. But I'll tell you what I think. Oh, the world's quick in telling you what they think. Some, some of the goofiest, goofiest decisions are made with what people think. Not but really what they know, but what they think. And what they just figure out, well, I just think this. Oh, you and I, you and I have to see Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the, the author, the finisher of our faith. Next thing we see here is a, he describes that glory, and I'm glad he does. He says, we behold the glory, and he says, here's the glory. Next line, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. It's the glory of Jesus being the only begotten of God the Father. Jesus is fully God. Jesus is God. Don't let no JW tell you he ain't, that he is, or he's not. He is. He is God. He is God. Three, three and one. And, and, and you just move in faith in that. You don't move in trying to figure that out. Okay, there's three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And, and they're, all, they're all God. G, uh, Peter would say to Ananias and Sapphira that you're not lying to man. You're lying to God. And he had just referenced the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit, they were lying before him. And, and, and lies are before the Spirit of God, who is God. But Jesus is God. He's the only begotten he, he, he is God. That's why he could die for our sins. That's why he can die for our sins. And that's why we can have eternal life through him. Because he was the perfect lamb of God. Lamb of God means sacrifice of God. The one that would be a worthy sacrifice. And God the Father says, yes, he's the sacrifice. And God the Father accepted God the Son on the cross Substituting us for our sins. He's the only begotten, the only one that comes from God. You and I, we're made from the dust of the earth. You know? So people weren't wrong when they were saying, oh man, you're just messed up. You're just dust. That's true, we are. But, and, but we're adopted into the family by the blood of Jesus. Jesus is. The, he's, his glory is in the fact that he's begotten of the Father, that he is God. Jesus is of God, and Jesus is from God. He, he's of God. He's, he's the only begotten. But he's also from God. Jesus would say that, I, the Father sent me, the Father sent me. He said that countless times where he was coming right from God, being the only begotten, being the only begotten. What we have when we behold his glory is what we close with here. And, and it says this only begotten of the father is full of something, full of two things, full being complete with, complete with. The first one is grace. He's full of grace, he says there. Grace means that favor, acceptance of God. Jesus is full of, of the very fact is that he approaches you and I, John said, we saw it in a couple of lines above that he dwelt with us. He wasn't ashamed to dwell with, with them and with man. He, he's approachable. His grace is that acceptance of you and of me. If, if you're here today and you know who you are, I don't have to pry it out of you. You, you know if you're here today and you've never, you, you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You, you, never, you never come to a realization that Christ died for you and you trust his death to save you. You, you know who you are. You know who you are. You, you know you, you hadn't come that way. I encourage you to come that way today. What, what better day than Christmas Eve than to come to the, a, a realization of this fact that Jesus saves, that he died on the cross because God loves you so much. 
and he's given his son for you to have eternal life. Man, that's it. That gets you to heaven. Amen. It's trusting in him. It's not, it's not anything that you and I do. It's all that he's done. Gosh, well, why, why would it be any reason for you not to submit to that reality? That reality of this, that God loves you so much he sent his son. And the reality of, of perishing if you don't. I'll just stay with that word perishing because we got kids in the day. I could say another word. But you know what I mean. Why would, you, why would you even ponder the thought of perishing for eternity when you can have everlasting life in Jesus Christ? And he offers you that everlasting life right now. You can take it right now, man. You can have it at 946 and 52 seconds, man, on Christmas Eve. You can, you can have that right now by believing right where you are. I'm not going to do an altar call. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. No. Nah. You ain't, we, how do we know we got enough time to wait for me to do that? You need to do it right where you sit right now. Where you are right now, receive Jesus. Receive his grace, the grace that saves us. It says Jesus is complete or filled with grace. And the second thing here, lastly, it says here, and also truth. And truth. He's full of truth. He's full of things that are right and sure. That's a truth thing. It is it's what's right and what is sure. You and I can, are offered a lot of stuff that ain't right nor sure. And I bet you had the Amazon man deliver that stuff sometime. <laughs> Gosh, man, I gave away some, finally gave away some sweaters yesterday I ordered on Amazon. They must have came from people in Pygmy, Africa, because... I ordered large, and man, that wasn't the kind of large I'm used to. I almost smothered in that thing. It was so tight on me. Whoa. You just don't know what you get. You think you're getting what you got, but you don't, do you? Jesus is the one that is right and sure. He's the truth. He's the truth. Jesus is the truth for right now, for right now. Right now, what he says and what he stands for and who he is is truth right now. You don't have to wait for that. You can, you can embrace him in the truth of him right now. He's also the truth for tomorrow. Jesus is the truth for tomorrow. What, whatever happens tomorrow. None of us don't know what, what will happen tomorrow. What will life unfold to be tomorrow? But you and I can know this. He's still true and sure and right tomorrow. In spite of what could be taken out of our lives, God forbid, or what could even be added to our lives. He's, he's truth right now. He's truth tomorrow. And yes, thirdly, he's truth forever. He's truth forever. And you and I need to have a forever mentality. Because this world here, this world that's subject to time and and, and matter, things that we can touch. No, there's a world that is just as real, even more real than this world we live in, and that's the world of eternity, the, the world of forever. And there is forever lasting life for those who believe that Jesus came to save. He's the way and the truth and the life, praise the Lord. And he came to save. And he saves all those who trust him. All those who trust him. So let's behold. Let's behold Christmas glory every day. Every day. Can't, can't hold on to this particular time of season. And we want. We want. These trees are going to be gone <laughs> this week. And it's not because I'm anti-tree. We got a tree at home. But we can't stay in this Christmas manufactured observance. No life has to go on. And we move on, but we can move on looking for the glory, beholding the glory, experiencing the shine of God. And I pray you are all 
of your life. Lord willing, we'll talk more about a new year next Sunday. And we'll talk about the very fact is that we step off and we step into things that are new. But one of the blessed things that we can remember, oh, so comforting, is that wherever we go, God's there. God's there wherever we go. And I pray you know that. I pray you're secure with that. And I pray you sleep good tonight because of that. So Merry Christmas. And, and, and Merry Christmas all year round. And I pray that you and I will always experience Christmas glory. That's Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your glory. Your, your presence that causes us to gaze at you. Causes us to look. But Lord, help us to always look to you. Because so often, so often we, we make the mistake and we gaze at other things. We gaze at other situations and matters and things that are in our lives. And so often we gaze at things that are not in our lives, things we don't have. And we miss the glory of the Lord. Shine your glory all around us like you did those shepherds. Help us to see our focus on you. You are the only begotten of the Father. And you come, Jesus, in that full, expressive glory in our lives. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for Christmas in your glory. It's fun. We love the cookies. We love the bells and the lights. But we love you more because you're the glory of Christmas. So help us to do that. Father, I pray for those who have never accepted you, who have never come in relationship with you in the only way, and that's through you, Jesus. I pray that you would open their eyes right now to see the glorious gospel that Jesus saves. Save people today, Lord, we pray. And wherever we go from here, whatever we have to experience unexpectedly, whatever trial, or pain comes into our lives. Lord, we thank you that you're with us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. So wherever we go, may we go with God because he's, he desires to go with us. May God bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Don't forget, come on over to the galley, get a little food, get a little coffee. And God bless your Christmas day. Let's stand.